Hi everybody, quick refresher on Python lists. So when we're thinking of lists within Python, those lists are a sequence of elements. And what those individual elements are can be just about anything. Um, on this slide I've defined a variable x and it's made up of a list and that list has Alice, Bob, Fran, John, and these are all strings as is indicated by the uh, tick marks. But I've also shoved in there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is an integer, and 10.0, which is a float uh, number. So lists can be a mix of different things. And usually when you create a list, you should have something pop into your head that looks like this, where we've got these things in the order that they were created, and then associated with each one is what we call the index, which is this uh, a particular item's place in that list but always starting out at zero. Computer scientists we start at zero when we're counting right so Alice is the at index zero, Bob is at index one, Fran two, John three, one two three four five is at four, etc etc. Okay so this is the basics of a list and this is how one way that you can create a list. So let's look at some really essential list methods that hopefully you've been exposed to before and just brush up on what they do and how they work. So I'm going to switch on over to PyCharm again. Okay, let's get it nice and large so everybody can see. All right, so uh, here's my list. Go ahead and copy this in um, from the slide. One thing to remember about lists is that unlike strings, um, lists are mutable. In other words, um, some of the methods that we're going to talk about will actually change the list that's inside of X, right? As X is, is done, is being manipulated without having to reassign some new thing to X, okay? Uh, and many of the methods we will see apply to strings as well, right? So first things first, the length of the list. Well, what is going to be the length of the list? What do you think the length of X is? That's just a count of the number of items in the list. Six. There are six items, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Now, uh, the next important thing we'll talk about is subscripting and slicing. Okay, so say I want the first element in the list. Well, the first element in a list lives at index zero right and that's Alice so if we print first here we should get Alice right Alice is the first item in the list she lives at index 0 I can also just print this directly no reason um, this X with the square brackets and then inside the brackets is the index of the item that we want to return think of this as a method call it that's what it is in truth and it's saying, give me the item at index whatever and return it. And that's what's happening there. In Python, you can do a neat trick, which is you can ask for the negative one th thing in the list. Well, what is that? Negative one is the last item in the list. Okay. So now what I should get is a print of uh, Alice and then the number 10.0. And that's in fact what I get. And you can manipulate these. You can print out uh, the second to last thing. You can print out the fourth item in the list um, or the fourth indexed item, which lo and behold, these just happen to be the same thing. Okay. This process, this act right here, this is called subscripting. Okay. This is the subscript. All right. Um, we can do other things. We can do what is called slicing. Slicing is a more general form of subscripting. It's taking pieces out. So let's say we just want the first couple of things here. Okay. Let's say we want, um, actually, you know what? Let's start somewhere easier. Let's do, we just want the last two things in the list. Okay. The numbers, these two numbers. Um, but give me, give me what they are. Um, from this guy all the way to the end. Well, what's the index of this guy? The index of this guy is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so let me print out 4 
and then a colon. Okay. What I have gotten here out of this slicing operator is a list. Note the brackets here. This is returning a list and the last two items. So this little operator here, let's start, let's move it. Let's say from index 2 until the end and run this. So I'm getting everything from index 2 to the end of the list. That's what this little colon gets you. But maybe I don't want everything to the end. Maybe I just want index 2 and index 3. All right. So what I'm going to put here is maybe a little counterintuitive. I'm going to put a 4 here and let's run it. What I get are Fran and John. Okay. So the way to read this is that the slicing operator is uh, a slice from a start index to an end, but exclusive of the end. Okay. So what I'm getting here is, hey, start at index 2 and go up to, but do not include index 4. Index 4 is this. 0, 1, 2, okay, give me 2, give me 3, up 2, but not including 4, okay? So this is slicing. This is what I've got here. Maybe also you want everything in the list except the last thing. So here I've got my colon. I have not specified a start position. That means start at 0. It's the same thing as saying this, okay? but give me up to and including everything except the item at index negative one. What's index negative one? Index negative one is the last item. Okay. Alice, Bob, Fran, John, etc. Okay. Maybe I want everything but the last two items. Okay. X sub with a colon, negative two. Okay. Up to, but excluding everything after index negative two. Okay, so maybe a little confusing, play with it, practice with it. It's a very handy tool in Python. It's, a, it's actually kind of unique to Python in a way, at least it's relatively unique among the most popular programming languages. Very powerful. All right, um, moving on. Other things we can do with this list. Uh, these methods, by the way, the subscripting, the slicing, all these methods, these next uh, three methods also apply to strings. So you can get parts of strings, like print, uh, let's, let's do a string uh, named mm -mm -mm, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and let's print from everything but G, the last item, A, B, C, D, E, F. All of these operators work on strings as well. All right, index. Okay, let's do the index. The index returns the index of the first instance of x in a list. So what is the first index of Fran? Well, Fran is at index 0, 1, 2, so I should get a 2 here, okay? just like we went over with the strings. Same thing for count count will return the number of items matching uh, that match whatever you give it here right uh, so there are oops I did the wrong thing count so there are one Alice's in here I can also look for one two three four five because that's in the list there's exactly one instance of one two three four five in this list okay I could add another one and it would give me two Okay, so all these methods, these are just kind of giving you some information about what's in the list. Let me copy this down here just for um, so we can see what we're working with. We can also modify lists. I guess I don't need that. We can also modify lists, right? Maybe we want to build a list on the fly, say, as we're reading data in from a fine file. That's also pretty easy to do. Um, I'm going to make a list of numbers just for simplicity's sake. So let me initialize an empty list, right? a list with nothing in it. 
But my intention here is that I'm going to create something, right? I'm going to put things in this list. This list is empty. These brackets got nothing in them, okay? Why don't I build up a list of numbers? Let's say um, powers of 2, okay? So how many powers of 2 do we want? Uh, 4 i in range 10. How about 10 powers of 2? What we'll do is we will append here, let's append, an element to the end of an existing list. Nums.append i times 2. Okay, so uh, where this will start, and once we're done, let's print the value of this list. Okay, okay. Oh, I'm not doing powers of 2, am I? I'm doing multiples. There we go. A um, little bit odd. Not exactly what I expected there. Uh, <laughs> that's because I'm being a goober. This is a power of 2. 2 to the i. Oh my goodness. This uh, double star operator is exponentiation. It's saying 2 to the power of i. Well, i is going to go in the range 0 up to, but not including 10. If you're not quite clear on how this range function works, uh, you should look it up. It's pretty intuitive, but basically range returns a list that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but not including 10. Okay, so 2 to the 10 is 512. Okay, no big deal. What's important here is that I am appending. I am appending this calculated value. Now notice the append is modifying this list. As it goes along, it's building up, building up, building up. And in fact, why don't we print it as it builds up every, every iteration? Whoops. You can actually see it. It builds up. Initially, it's empty. Then we've added 2 to the 0th power. 2 to the 0 is 1. Then we added 2 to the 1. 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, etc., etc., etc. Okay? So appending modifies our list. Pretty neat. Very useful for, again, whenever we need to build up a list by when we're like, for example, reading in data. Another thing we can do is we can insert items into a list. So right now my list looks like this. Maybe I want to put the number 3 in here for some reason. Maybe I'm working on a Fibonacci sequence or something. Insert, the way it works, is you insert at the index you want. Okay, so first we give it the index. And I want to put 3 right here. I want to put 3 where the 4 is and basically move all these guys down one. Okay, So what I want to do is give it the index of the place I want to insert the number 3. 0, 1, 2. Uh, I want to <laughs> insert the number 3 in order. Okay. So I want to insert at index 0, 1, 2, right here, the number 3. Actually, let me put something else there. The name Bob at index 2. There's Bob, right? So I've actually, uh, again, I have modified the list by calling this insert function. One, two, Bob, and then everything else is there. It's just shifted down a spot. Okay. Um, this does not return anything. Okay. Inserting does not return anything. And if I print this, it will show me none, the word none. That means it's not returning anything. It's modifying in place the list. Remove. All right. Well, putting Bob in there was a mistake. So let me remove Bob. Okay. When I remove Bob, I inserted Bob, and then I remove Bob. He gone again. Okay. Note that remove 
only removes the first value here that it finds. And if you try and remove something that's not in the list, like Alice, you will get an error. You will get an exception. Okay, so Python will scream at you. All right, um, two more methods I want to show you. Popping. Popping you may not have encountered. We will use this a little bit. Um, what popping does is it removes and returns an item by its index. Okay. So um, let's make a new list. Let's go. Let's go back here. Let's get this guy. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go back and, and work with this list again. Suppose I want to get rid of the very last element in the list. I don't care what that element is, just get rid of the last thing. Okay. I can call x.pop. That's going to remove it. Okay. And if I print x after this, let me get rid of the, stop printing the rest of these folks here. If I remove, I'll run this again. I remove the last element of the list, which is 10, it's gone. Okay, not to be found. I got rid of it. Um, I can also remove arbitrary things from the middle. Say I want to get rid of Fran. Okay, Fran is at index 0, 1, 2. Let me pop 2. It's going to get rid of Fran. Okay, so this is useful. Pop and pop with an index is useful when you want to remove you know where an item is but maybe not its value whereas remove you have to know the value of the thing you're trying to get out of there maybe you just want to chop off the end of the list that will be useful in some instances okay all right last thing to show is going to be sort and sorted okay so when we print x We've got Alice, Bob, Fran, John, one, two, three, four, five. We can reverse this list by calling x.sort and then printing it again. Okay. Ooh, oh, I cannot sort it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of reverse. Okay, so this is illustrative, right? It's yelling at me. I tried to sort this list, but it didn't work. And it's saying type error. This less than operator is not supported between instances of int and string. Oh, well, I've tried to sort this list, but what Python is telling me here is I don't know how to compare numbers to strings. Doesn't work. It also doesn't know how to compare floats to strings. Okay, so it can't sort this list. All right. Let's get rid of just. Let's get rid of the numbers and put just uh, the names. Of course, these names are already in order. Let's toss them around a bit. John, Bob, Alice, Fran. OK, so now they're tossed around a little bit. And when I call x.sort, okay, it takes the original order and reorganizes them. You know, using, if they're all strings, it's going to do it uh, by an alphabetical comparison. If they're all numbers, it'll do numerical order. Um, notably here, x.sort changed the list, right? It modified it. When I print out the old list down here, the list, it's changed. It's different. Maybe you don't want to change the list, okay? Maybe you want a copy of the list that's been changed. The way we can do that is to print is to call this method which is sorted or excuse me this is a function sorted it's going to do the same thing but it's going to return a copy of the sorted list and it will leave the original list unmodified okay so let me print for you just some original list is this uh, print sorted copy this original list is still unsorted okay so here's my original list I called sorted on X got the copy of it got the return value of this stored it in Y printed that here it is it's sorted but my original list is unmodified. Okay. 
This is a little trick that may come in handy. Sometimes you need sorted data, but you want to preserve the original list's order. This is a way to do that. Okay? All right. Wow. A lot to digest here. We are going to be working exhaustively with lists in this class. So if it all doesn't sink in, uh, don't worry about it right now. You're going to get lots of practice. But just be aware kind of, of these basic methods here. Uh, getting the length, especially this, these two things, length and subscripting. Okay, we'll get lots and lots of exposure of these other things as we go on. All right, lists are a critical part of this class. Go back to your 131 notes, brush up on it. You're going to be seeing lists from day one till the very last day of the semester. Okay.